This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I just reached over because I was loud in my headphones. One yeah. thing about these little units, you touch that thing, it drops like a rock. I mean, you don't have to, like, turn it. You just have to touch it. Like, my God, the thing is rather – there we go. Now we got it back. Yeah, the dials on some of those are just so touchy, just so iffy. Oh, it's like you use one, and it's like you got to turn it a circumference of the world, and I'm barely moving up. And others, like you said, you you breathe on it, all of a sudden, dead yeah. silence. Yeah, a lot of – they're like the uh, hot – like a shower in a hotel where it's either scalding hot <laughs> yes. or freezing. Oh, yeah. There's no yes. in I don't know. When I see, think of that word touchy, I just think of, you know, management. But other than that, <laughs> big babies figured it all the way. And actually, that works out pretty well. You know, does that have anything to do with the fact that I never see anybody in person? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe. That might have some. But I, I haven't for like 30 years. I, I haven't worked out of a radio station. and I'm going once in a while, but very, very mm. rarely. But I just, that would seem very unusual now, I suppose. Um, I don't know what this is all about, but it says, yeah, I guess I do know what it's all about. Most Americans now think nine to five jobs are uh, an outdated idea. Well, guess what? Unless you own a corporation, you don't get a vote. How about that? You want to work here or not? Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, they might also just be saying that working a nine to five isn't the ideal. Like they'd rather maybe pursue their own business ideas. Go. And going and sitting and working in a cubicle all day just isn't for them, which I would definitely I, agree for. With. I understand that absolutely, but it says most Americans. That's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's how most Americans think nine to five is outdated. I do because I haven't worked nine to five now ever. I have never. I don't think I. Well, since I was a, I was a uh, working at Dayton's and Donaldson's doing that stuff. I, I, mm-hmm. I, I have not worked nine to five since then because it was either in the voiceover business or in. Capital Records or in radio. You just don't work nine to five. So I guess I don't get a vote because I've never done it. Well, since yeah. I was a teenager. No, I, I I think you do because you get the other you you've had the other side of it, which is you are very anti. Like you you haven't had to work the the nine to five. So mm-hmm. you have that perspective of how much extra time or like how much you are able to do stuff during like two o'clock hours, whereas other people are stuck in a cubicle. That is true. Yeah, I've never had that job where I was in a cubicle all day. That, that probably is tough, I would imagine, being in a cubicle all day, just sitting there by your, especially if you're eating your lunch while you're still in the cubicle working. Yeah. yeah. I would not care for that at all. No question about it. But yeah, I, I don't know. You find your way. I, I will tell you one thing, and I'm the one thing I'm very, I don't know if I'm touchy about it or whatever, but if there's an example of how America works, I would be it. Started with absolutely nothing. Got out of high school at 16. Went to college for one day. Things all worked out. So what I'm saying is, if I can do it, so can you, right? Right. What does there the article know. go into detail on what uh, they would change or what portion of the nine to five they're revolting against? Because it might even just be as simple as like an hour earlier. Maybe people maybe want, like, like eight, an eight to eight four. To four cause so they have an extra hour like after they get off or something. What does your day job have in common uh, with that old VCR taking up space in your attic? They're both outdated, or at least a majority of us now think so. A poll of 2,000 working Americans found 57% feel uh, feel that a normal 9-to-5 job no longer works for them. 51% think jobs without a flexible schedule are an outdated idea, and it's time to rethink it. Plenty of Americans have already abandoned 9-to-5s, and the gig economy is now in full swing, but... Do you think that's better than the classic uh, five-day-a-week job? And is getting uh, rid of normal jobs even realistic? The survey also found a lot of people want to be paid differently and more they want to be paid differently and more often. Well, who doesn't want to be paid more often, right? I mean, you get paid what every week, every two weeks. Something yeah, usually every two weeks. But I've had a job where the pay rate and everything—it wasn't like you got paid more. They just broke it up into every Friday you got paid. Oh yeah. 700 instead of 1400 okay. for every two weeks. Yeah, I had I had a job uh before college that was like it was a weekly pay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, it, it's and then it, it's the same thing at the end of the month, but it's just like matter, yeah. you know, it's nice having yeah. that check you know, get sl- slid over Looking the table to, to Friday, Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? <laughs> there you go, ladies. And yeah, cuz I get paid once a month. I think I've always gotten mm-hmm. paid once a month. Okay. So, as long as I've been doing this, I've been, you know, radio and that stuff. No, actually that's not true. Uh, the old joint, I just call it, 
I, I just call it uh, basically Disney KQ because when it was mm-hmm. Disney KQ, it was a much different company, and they pay uh, every two weeks. Yeah, that's true. And I think Crumulist or whatever, what Crum Crumula, <laughs> what the hell ever it's called, Crumulus, Crumulus. Uh, they paid every two weeks. I know that uh, also true. I you know I called uh, I called Dan Seaman yesterday. And he goes, I, I, we had a good laugh. I'm sitting around a couple of nights ago. And my phone rings. I don't usually answer my phone when I don't recognize the number, mm-hmm. but I do it about maybe once or twice a month. You just don't. You're not thinking. You go, oh, somebody's calling. You answer it. Yeah. Instead of, of course. looking at who's calling. Yep. A reporter called me. And he said his name, but I didn't hear him. I don't have any idea what the hell his name is or where he worked or whatever because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. Uh, is it true that a certain radio station is going to be purchased by another company and you're going to do the morning show? I'm like, where did you come up with that? I mean, where do these things come from? People just speculating on the street, that kind of deal? Yeah, I think it's a lot like whether it's you know sports or entertainment, people will just go, how can I get somebody to click on this story? And now they can put at the end of it, Tom Bernard had no comment. Yeah, I so yeah, you know what? You know. Yep, it's a very good point. That when you put it at the very end, I, yeah, I had no comment, about, I suppose. I don't know. No. I guarantee you one thing, if that is true, and it turned out to be this joint that was buying the other joint, I get to stand up and do the Donald Trump. You're fired. Do I get to do that? <laughs> yeah, you're, fired, you're fired. You're fired. You're fired. Put together a whole production. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Do a production. Just stream it. <laughs> the whole deal. Pay per view. I would love that actually. Yeah, do it on pay per view. Absolutely. But uh, yeah, I ran into a bunch of people that are big listeners of the show. It was very, very nice. Uh, it's it's coming. There, both shows are coming along nicely, as a matter of fact. And it's just, I'm very happy about that because I don't really want. Well, I suppose at this point in my life, I would just probably retire or something. But. I can't see like leaving podcasting. I think I'll go work at Kmart. I don't see me doing that. No, no. I I would pay to see that personally. <laughs> the Just hell do you want? Ch- that check out things yeah. like or check out people at Kmart. Yeah, paper or plastic. It took too long. You're getting plastic. You're getting exactly. I don't care. Go <laughs> poison people. Way to go. <laughs> Typical. Nice job. Um, God, there was a guy uh, about a week ago. I went on my walk. And I told you there's this one tunnel that I go through because you can either go north of the freeway or south of the freeway, and there's a tunnel underneath it. Mm -hmm. I go over there because of this boat show thing they got that's gigantic. That's still going on? It goes on for like a month. I was going to say, it feels like it's been two weeks now. It has. Setting it up takes like three weeks. Oh, okay. It literally is about a mile long that they shut down the road. And I'm not exaggerating. It's about a mile of the the uh, intercoastal front, they shut it down on the eastern side, so you can't even walk over there. Mm -hmm. You you wouldn't believe, it's got to be billions of dollars worth of boats. It has to be. And it's everything from, you know, a little little skiff. Is that what they call a skiff, a little boat, tiny thing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. That sounds right. I do do know (laughs) skiffs, yeah, are smaller boats. Okay. Um. I had a house in Golden Valley that was a very big house. You could fit that house in some of these boats. <laughs> like, holy God, those boats are big. Oh, Honest, to, well, you saw, I told you about the one that, the, the, what the hell is it? I always forget the guy's name, the guy that owned the San Antonio Spurs. Or it's the Dallas Mark Maverick. Mark Cuban. Dallas yeah. Maverick. I keep thinking the wrong town, too. That's the other <laughs> thing. We're trained now. <laughs> you know exactly. I know how his mind works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Mark Cuban's my kind of guy. That's why I have a hard... You know, I do that, and I don't do it on purpose, but I block things out of my head if I don't care. I don't think Mark Cuban's my kind of guy, you know? Yeah, I, he's a hard person to read. But yeah. I, I feel like he puts on a facade for the public, but he's probably not as nice as he seems. I think you two could be civil for, like, a lunch together, but then as soon as you walk yeah. out the doors, you're like, I'm never hanging out with that guy again. <laughs> uh, I would believe that. Unless, of course, they had $300 million to buy it. If you spent $300 million on a boat, why would you buy a used boat? That new one's a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's half a billion. Maybe that's what it is. Oh, my God. I know we got to get going in a second here, but I saw that the, the – is it the attorney general, that woman in New York that's going after Trump, and those two are battling out, and she's trying to ruin his life, and he's saying, you're never going to ruin my life. And I, I can't remember her name, but I, I just think you talk about on both sides an abuse of power. 
God, people love to abuse power now, don't they? Yeah, and is it, you talk about Letitia James. Yeah, that's her. That's her name. What is she? Is she Attorney General? Uh, she's the yeah, the Attorney General of New York. Of New York, and she just can't wait to ruin his life, and he can't wait to ruin her life, and everybody sucks, and everything's terrible. And I'm gonna stay in podcasting. It's like okay, good. I have it. Oh, by the way, it was a nice thing because a bunch of listeners got together, and there are people in certain groups that have no idea about apps. I mean, that you could listen to a podcast, just get the app, hit the app every morning, and you can listen to it. They think they have to download every episode, and you do mm-hmm. not have to download any episodes. No, the app does all that uh, all that work yep. for you. And we're on everything. We're on Spotify. We're on all of them. So, you know, mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure that you understand. You don't have to download the whole thing. Just get the app, the Tom Bernard Show app. You literally click on it, and the show will come up every day or from yesterday or whatever you need you can bring up. You can go back to the very first episode if you really want to. What a great idea. Was it a good show? I would assume so. I mean, do we do I, anything else other than put out well, great A-plus quality? I wasn't here yet, so I have no comments. <laughs> I wasn't here yet. Uh, you know, it's, oh, God, I got to get going here. Sorry. I'm running over my time in the whole shooting match, ladies and gentlemen. We shall take a break. Be right back. Some sports hun yuck's going to be up next. What's his name? We should get an we should get a Judd app. Not have him on. Just have the app and have him just stare at us. AI Judd. <laughs> yeah, just a button bar with a bunch of Judd sayings that we can. <laughs> exactly. I love it. We shall return with Judd in just a couple of seconds. It's time to think about the high taxes in Minnesota and how much you could be saving with a Sioux Falls location. One of the first things Minnesota companies that have expanded or moved to Sioux Falls notice are the lower tax bills. Companies don't pay corporate or personal state income tax. And their other expenses are lower in Sioux Falls, too. Those business leaders started at our website. Uh, Here's the deal. SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. That's the website where you'll find, like, a lot of information that you're going to need to make the Sioux Falls decision. You'll discover just how quickly and efficiently that you can get your operation started in Sioux Falls. If you've never been there, by the way, Sioux Falls is a great city. A little windy, I will tell you that. Not only will your business be up and running sooner, you'll also be making higher profits. The National Tax Foundation's new index shows Minnesota at number 45, paying, I think it's 49 now, actually. It's moved up on the list. It's the second highest tax state in America now. That's what I've been told, anyway. Paying too many taxes, I do know that part. And South Dakota at number two, one of the best tax climates in the nation. 2024 is the time to make your move to Sioux Falls. Check out SiouxFallsDevelopment.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw Bryant. Mike Lindell and my pillow employees. I want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance, new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM. And you get free shipping on your entire order, too, so that's great. Get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also, you can get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets, which Catherine did. They just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers, 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything's on sale, as a matter of fact. The brand new uh, kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels. They actually absorb is what I'm talking about. They have dog beds, they have blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146 and use promo code TOM. And you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146. Go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. 
This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. I said wherever you get your podcast. You heard me, right? Right. Oh, I did. I did. Uh, Plus, I I like that bass. I like that bass. That's good. I do love bass, too. There's no question about it. You can feel that in your heart, man, your chest. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. Right in your soul. Now I stayed away from sports yesterday, so just just so I wouldn't have a horrible attitude about sports today. And I don't know. I don't know any scores from yesterday. I got no idea what went on yesterday. I'm in a great mood about sports because I don't know what went on yesterday. Well, we got to talk about last night, um, the Timberwolves game against the Utah Jazz. Okay. We've, we've got the dunk of the year, the dunk of the last five years. Ant Edwards on a dunk, Tom, managed to concuss, I believe, the jazz player, whose name is John Collins. He dislocated his left finger while in the air on John Collins' face, and he still made the basket, and it might be, or the dunk, and it might be uh, one of the most impressive things I've seen in sports, just as far as a, oh my God, a human being did that. No doubt. Well, who was the seven foot seven guy from? He was from like, I don't know, somewhere in Africa. I don't remember. Maybe seven foot Manute seven. Manute Bull? Manute Bull. Way back that, when? That he used to just reach up and grab the rim while standing on oh, the yeah. court. I'm like, holy God. Yeah, no, but um, th- this was Jordan esque. You know, we've, right. it, it's become a cliche to say that, um, that a guy who dunks posterized a, a guy, like, you know, he posterized him. And I'm always like, yeah, you know, that's impressive. I mean, certainly I could not be capable of that. But we've seen that before. We've seen this before. This last night, I don't think I've ever seen a guy injure another player and himself on the same dunk because it's so, it's yeah. so, for lack of a better term, just violent. I mean, it was absolutely violent. It was awesome to watch, actually. I would imagine. Isn't that amazing that people get bigger and bigger? They're going to have to raise the bucket pretty soon, aren't they, to like 12 feet or something? I mean, they're going to have to. It's too easy now. I don't know. I think they like this, though. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. A lot of fanfare and all the rest of it. I'm sure basketball is a hell of a good sport. There's no question about that. But I just, uh, yeah, I just, for some, well, I, first of all, I had a very, very busy day yesterday. I had doing stuff. I think I went to bed last night at 11 o'clock because I'm working on some other things for the family podcast. And I just had a long day. So I just, I went, you know what? I'm not going to even check on the sports. I'm going to learn it all from Judd tomorrow morning. Well, That's what I'm doing. I started with the good news because there's some bad Uh-oh. news involving your baseball team. <clears throat> what a shock. Well, so I've told you all spring, don't be concerned about the wins and the losses, right? Mm Because, I mean, it's spring training, and and on, you know, in a week and a half, it resets, and opening day. Well, yesterday we found out that three twins, including one very unpleasantly, is going to open the season on the injured list. Joan Duran, the the fantastic closer, Mm -hmm. has a oblique strain, and he will not be opening the season with the team. Great. He will be on the IL. Um, Caleb Thielbar, who's dealt with a hamstring all spring, this one's not a surprise, is going to open the season on the IL. Uh, The Duran one is a definite blow. And then then the guy that they got in in, um, the trade with Seattle, Anthony DiScalfani, is going to open the season on the IL. And my guess is he does not pitch because... He was acquired with a bad elbow, and I think he's going to need Tommy John, so he'll be out for about a year and a half. Why would we trade for someone who's going to be sitting out a year and a half? This is a really good question. Uh, The Twins have had a habit of this. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, previously, I think they've just been flat-out duped. Like, they, they got that Tyler Malley from the Reds, who is now in Texas. And they actually got him in the in the heat of a pennant race at the trade deadline, right? And found out his arm, I think it was last April, uh, was a mess. And so that was unpleasant. This guy came over in the Polanco trade with a bunch of cash with him. And like, because I don't trust the twins now, I Googled him as soon as I uh, as as soon as they acquired him, and it was out there that he had arm problems. Uh, I'm guessing Seattle sent him with a bunch of cash and said, you take him, we don't, if you want to complete this trade, we don't want him. And so that's why. And I'm not joking. He is a hot potato pitcher. Right. 
Why do we keep getting involved in things like this? We'll get him, and then he can sit around for two years. I, like, what? I don't know. I don't get it either. I don't understand this team, and I've never understood this team since 1991. Yeah, well, that was a great year, but besides that, but so like now this is, oh, and uh, and make this what you will. Bucks didn't didn't play yesterday because of back tightness. Oh God, here we go again. And that's what I said. Now he took he took batting practice or he he took his swings um, in in the cage. And I saw Baldelli saying, "Well, if this was a real problem, he wouldn't have been swinging in the cage." But uh, you can't help but feel with Buxton anytime there's something like this that it's what you just said. Here we go again. No question about it. It's just, it's just it's the same. Every year, year after year, it just repeats the same thing. Oh, he's out and he's in. Oh, you know, he's back out. It's like, whatever, for Christ's sake. Hell of a talent, but he just can't stay healthy. It's, yeah, I know. It's so disappointing. But the Duran thing was a real surprise. I don't think yeah. that had been reported. I don't think that was out there. And all, all of a sudden, uh, Derek Falvey went, I believe it was on the radio broadcast to chit chat with the broadcasters and said, yeah, he's going to open the season on the injured list. Jesus. So what are they going to do? They're going to probably have Griffin Jack's clothes, but the problem with this is it bumps everybody up one spot. And so it depletes. And I mean, this is your most, this is your most important bullpen arm. It's not like, you know, if it was just the bar, it's not great because he is one of uh, two left-handers in the bullpen. But it's not the end of the world. But like this is an oblique scare me because obliques you have to sit out. Like you can't rush back from that or you will just restrain the oblique. And then you're starting from point one. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I just was sent some information. I was because people a lot, you know, in certain generations and all that stuff, there were people that thought they had to download every episode of this show, right? And the family show. Oh, as sure. Well which they don't have to. All you have to do is go to the app store and get the Tom Bernard Show app and you just click on the app and you're there every day. You're good to go. One guy. So I get the comment after comment. Oh, love the shows. Wonderful. Everything's great. Thanks so much. It'd be much easier. Just absolutely love it. The last comment that just popped up. Hey, Tom, nice shirt. (laughs) No, I don't know what that means. It was a nice blue shirt, I thought. You know your shirt, like your shirt right now. No, no, when? this one's red. This is this is. One, I ah. shot a video last night telling people how to just go to the. Oh, app. It doesn't cost anything to download it. You just download it, and instead of messing around, you know, you can put it on your car through Bluetooth yeah. and all the rest of it. Yeah, you, have you to don't have to download episode after episode after episode because I'd never do that. It's too much of a pain. Just go to the app store, click on the app, Tom Bernard Show app, and you're good to go. But. Thank you for the nice shirt comment. I, I, yes, I look good in baby blue. There's no question. I like your shirt now for sure. That's a let that, that looks like a comfortable, nice shirt Very with a nice. a zip on it. I mean, that's bravo. I do like zips because I got some oh. chunky fingers and hands. Those li- those little buttons is a, that's a bitch. I can't do the little buttons. I can do the bigger ones. I can't do things now that aren't comfortable. And I mean, this has yeah. been a this has been a lifelong thing, but. I don't know how you go to a work in a suit every day. I know. Well, f- very few people do now, don't they? Some do still. Yeah, obviously. I think you're right now. But, I mean, my, my dad did. Yeah. He worked in retail. He would leave every day. I mean, he had all these suits, dressed pretty impeccably, and I am the polar opposite of that. Well, in my dad's case, he had to wear uh, a jacket every day. I mean, it was a straight jacket, but, you know. Does that make any difference? <laughs> that's, that's um. well, no, it's a jacket, right? Yeah. You guys have to experience that someday, them hauling off your dad in a straitjacket. It's something to watch as a seven-year-old. Yeah, no, I think I pass on that one. Where do you think the anger comes from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm not <laughs> not sure. I'm not, it baffles me. It does baffle But yeah, yeah. People, people think it's a lot harder. I think it's people, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70 years old, something like that, are not really used to it yet. But yeah, you do not have to download it episode after episode. After so just get the app, you're good to go. Any. In your car, at home, whatever you want to do. So that's yeah, downloading is a, uh, in in that sense, is a thing of the past, it way is. past in podcasting now. It is absolutely. Yeah, it's it's as it's a click of the button. Yes, sir. It's all you can do is click the button in your, like I said, in your car, your house, whatever. I like it. So we're trying to avoid talking about sports because all we got to do to talk <laughs> about sports is people are hurt. That's all we have. Yeah, and the twins. It's unfortunate because the season is starting very shortly. The time is nigh. 
Yeah. Yes, that's a, that's well put. I love that. <laughs> I love that phrase. You do, yeah. Sounds like we're in like 16th century France or something. But it sounds very that, dramatic. <clears throat> the time is nigh. The, the time is nigh sounds like you're absolutely screwed, too. Uh, yes, it does. It sounds like you're going to get killed or something like yeah. that. There's no question about and, it. And perhaps who who knows with sports in this in this town, the team itself might be uh, in bad shape. Could be. Is is there is there any hope for the? I mean, it doesn't sound like the Twins to start at least to start their season is going to be very good. Well, the good thing is they're opening against Kansas City. Yeah, that does help. Which is another uh, not so great team from the Central. So. But here's their thing. The Central Division, I don't think, is going to be good again. Right. I'm not sure it's going to be as bad as last year. Some team, Detroit might be a tick improved. But the the thing about this is if they can hang around, like if they can just be competitive, they can win that division. They they can. Yeah. Can they win a World <laughs> Series? I don't think so. But can they win that division? Yes, they they can. I just I don't like it when you get to this point in the spring and unpleasant – or surprising injuries pop up. That to me is never a good sign. I I always feel that there's a uh, that there's a certain aura that surrounds teams going in t- yeah. into seasons, yep. and 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 sometimes they're positive, and that's great. Uh, and sometimes things start to go bad, and it's sort of a sign from the sports gods. And you know, Buxton Buxton having a back tightness is not surprising because it's Buxton. Right. But Duran the Duran thing is an unpleasant thing for to come up this late. That is unfortunate. I'm looking forward to the start of the baseball season. And by the way, I got to mention some because, you know, I think I've mentioned this before, but maybe not. You just mentioned Detroit. I am maybe the only American not from Detroit that loves Detroit. Really? It's, just, it's very urban. I love really yep. urban areas. It was part of my territory when I was at Capitol Records, so I used to go there. I There are parts of Detroit that are phenomenal. You ever notice that? Um, you know, I've been there uh, when I, I was – Covering the Vikings, I was there for a few games, but I, I, I didn't explore. The only area I really explored one time was uh, Greek Town. Oh yeah, which yep. was re- which was really really cool. Yep. <clears throat> I, I mean, but if you were in in your end of the business, I mean, the music in- industry there has to be awesome because there's oh, so God, much yeah. history there. Like that would be that would be a really cool uh, business to be in because you probably got to see a lot of things that were absolutely historic. There's no question about it. R and B, a lot of it came out of Detroit. There's yeah. no question about that. It's my favorite, some of my favorite music in the world. So yeah, it's a great time. I wish people go, oh Detroit, oh my God, you never been there. I mean, if you were, you went to the wrong parts. There are some you know horrible parts. There are some horrible parts of the Twin Cities. Yep, and know. downtown and downtown Detroit has improved as well. Yes. Like they've done yep. a lot of work. No question about it. All right, Pally, so we'll just, uh, I'll talk to you again probably November when the season's over because it's going to be too painful. Is that the plan? I'd be right in the heart of Vikings. Sure. Why not? Let, <laughs> let's regroup <laughs> then. True. Let's okay. regroup at that point. But yeah, it's, uh, we'll see. Ho- hopefully I can come with more uh, of a positive news t- uh, tomorrow. How does that sound? That sounds good. It, our first game is what, 10 days from today? Is that right? March 28th. Oh, 28th. So it's nine days from today. Yep. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure. I thought it was 10, so I'm glad I asked you. It's only nine days away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that would be a week plus two if you're not following. Yep. One week from today, and then add two more days, and then that's the first real game of the season. See how simple that is? Just beautiful. So the two things are you don't have to d- download podcasts now. Correct. It's simple as a click of the app, and in nine days, two more than seven, the Twins open the season at Kansas City. Two more than seven. That's exactly right. I'm glad okay, you all right. that way. There's no question about that. Yeah, we had Pat Miles in the family show yesterday. My God, it was, what a, I love her. How's Pat Miles doing? Uh, you know, because Bucky died. I don't know if you know that. Her husband, Bucky, died. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah. yeah it's a tough role, but I adore that woman. She's uh, one of my favorite people. We're doing a series just on how women in TV news change the news for the better. Okay. How the news was delivered, and uh, Pat was our first guest. We're going to go through a lot of different people. I got. I can't get a hold of Cindy Bricado though, because she's got a she's got a Facebook page, but there's nothing on it. There's no way to contact her. And, so yeah, because she she came back to Channel Five, if you recall. What was that about fifteen years ago? It's about right. Yeah, that that she came back. But yeah, yeah, and Pat and Pat was a legend because her and Shelby, Shelby were Shelby. huge on Channel Four before yeah. she switched to Channel Eleven. 
Well, the only balance, it just shows that there's balance in the universe because you had Shelby and Pat Miles, and then on the bad end, there's Mark Rosen. Yeah. <laughs> I love Rosie. I haven't seen Rosie. I could. I was out of town for his wedding. He just got married last fall. Yep. Or last early winter or whenever it was. But yeah, I was out of town, so I didn't get to go. But I love Marky Rosen, man. Known him now for forty years. I've known him. What yep. a great well, guy. Well, he he owes his his success on on the radio side to one guy, as far as I'm concerned. Dan Colhane. Uh, no, no, no. His name was Tom something. Dan was one of the greats. Also, oh. no question about it. I just think it's unfair, and I've always told Mark Rosen this. Who ever heard of a six foot six Jew? That's what I'd like to know. <laughs> he's a big fella, man. Not, oh, not only Rosen's is he tall, huge. He's huge for Christ's sake. But his family, a oh, man, they're the nicest people in the world. His his mom was around and mm-hmm. got to talk to her once in a while. But all right, I'm reminiscing too much. We gotta move on. All yeah, right, man. everybody. Love Rosie. All right, talk we'll talk tomorrow, tomorrow Pally. We'll take a break. Be right back in a couple of seconds. Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Eyewitness News with us. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo. Also going to help you sell firearms safely and worry-free. If you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one and don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. Jim can help you sell those firearms safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's extremely knowledgeable. Will help you get top dollar, which is very important. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off your shoulders. He'll do it all. KNL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. Y- you should go visit. I've been there a couple of times. It's a great, great spot. You can also visit them online, of course, at www.klgunstore.com. Recently, Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC was contacted by a company that does on-site sales. Jim was confused. Wait, they don't know anything about us. Our staff, our reputation, most importantly, our customers. Hey, pal, no problem. We do them all over the country. You know, get the manager off the roof sale, inflatable gorilla sale, and our favorite, the 13-hour sale with a giant clock that goes to 13. Urgency, baby. We bring our crew because, well, your people are, let's just say, a little uh, laid back. And the pricing? Nothing special, sport. But Jim thought, we price competitively every day. Our prices are special. We definitely don't need these guys. But sale does convey some urgency, so he made a bold decision for his fine dealerships. Announcing the Valley Buick GMC 365 day sale. And we can even extend it a couple years or so. I got the Air Dancer guy, scratch offs, plastic keys, bubble machine. Box. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley or Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Hurry. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has a over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring <coughs> cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res. Spell it forward or backward. It spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Edgar, what are you doing? Whipping somebody? What the hell was that noise? No, I was just making the face when that guitar riff comes on as we come back. No, you feel like you have to kind of make that face. You do, absolutely. You know, it's funny you bring that because it was just a, popped into my head. We were just talking about Marky e. Rosen, and I worked with him originally 40 years ago. and known him for a long time. Tallest Jew in America, six foot six. Yeah, he's a big dude. He is a big fella. There's no question about it. But my favorite thing of all, when when CCO decided, well, we can't leave him on that show over there. He's helping him kick our ass and blah, blah. We got to take him back and put him on CCO or whatever they did, did, right? But here's what I, I'll never understand this. And I can't remember who the GM was, but he's a massive pain in the ass. I do remember that. Dan Culhane wrote the song, Rosen, 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 Little Marky Rosen. Rosen, 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 sports guy, right? He writes it. The guy, when they take him over to CCO, they take him back from us to try to hurt the ratings and all that stuff, you know, whatever. 
The guy says, well, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. This is not little Marky Rosen. This is big Marky Rosen. Do you not get the joke? Uh, what? You don't, the guy's six foot six. You refer to him as little Marky Rosen. It's a joke, pal. Oh, and, yeah, wow. I know, it's like, what? Okay, <laughs> whatever. Some people, hey, listen, some people are so... <laughs> I understand completely. So what's in the news, Pally? Well, the snow is going to be the big thing. I, I alluded to so it I yesterday, hear. and they're getting all locked in on it now today. So it sounds like Thursday night into Friday. Yeah, I printed this out, and then I, of course, left it upstairs because I'm a moron. Um, it's going to be two to four <laughs> inches. It's going to be two waves, two to four inches with the first wave. And then on Saturday night into Sunday, pretty much the entire day, Sunday, it's going to snow. Uh -huh. They're not, Barlow's not putting a total on it yet, but he's implying that it's definitely going to be bigger than the two to four. So oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, uh, for all, for everyone who is wanting snow, you're going to get it. And of course it's getting toward the end of March and that's, that's the way it goes around here. Right. Yeah, you get a lot Kevin, of your face says it all. I I hate every word that's come out of your mouth since you got on the show today. <laughs> hey, you know, it'll get nice around the 20th of June. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> we always get lulled into this false sense of, oh, it's yeah. Must, but, you know, of course, it, it, it's been such a weird year and ice is off the lakes. And, you know, people are already right. like like mentally transitioning to getting boats out and golfing and, you know, kind of getting started early but that you know this will this will keep us honest i guess i suppose it's all true you guys hey it's minnesota it is what it is there's no question you got people got screwed out of ski season which is unfortunate ice skating no a lot of not a lot of ice skating this year so they yeah i can understand why those people would be pissed off i was never much into skiing or ice skating so whatever i wonder if some of the that's a good question i wonder if some of the ski resorts that i know highland closed oh, yeah. for the year a couple weekends ago i wonder if they'll reopen i would bet they would try to just you know if we get a pretty good snow if right. they could get a couple weeks uh you know of of skiing but but i have no idea how that works like i don't know what their operating expenses are and whatnot but that's got to be a little spendy, I would imagine. Just keep it open, keep it open, keep it open. Yeah, open. yeah. So, I mean, I definitely get why they have to cut it, you know, cut it off at a certain point. But, yeah, there's definitely a lot of people who missed out on a lot of money, you know, this this winter with it going down the way it went. So, It's true. So, we'll slog through. Like I said, it just – Minnesota it has some very cold winters, some warmer winters, but – I'm sorry, but winter in Minnesota starts on November 1st and basically doesn't end until like June 20th. That's just the way it is. I mean, it it you're you're definitely not out of the clear in April either, as we've oh, learned God. the last couple of years. So yep, no, it's great. Had some great weather this year, though. Some very nice weather, unless of course you do want to go ice skating or skiing. I guess. So now I got to hurry up and get home after work, and instead of taking a nap, go pick up dog ass out of the yard. To get all oh, that taken yeah. care of before <laughs> before the snow comes, <laughs> no doubt about it. I, I go as you know. I go for several walks every day, and I was on a walk with Catherine and Jude last night, our dog. And I'm talking to Catherine, and I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden, for some reason, I looked down and I missed a pile of dog poop by about one inch. Oh, you dodged a bullet there. Oh, God, you step and dog. You may as well throw those shoes away. Well, you never... can't get it. You cannot no. get it out of there. There's nope. nothing. Like, <laughs> you, you take it down to the utility sink, and you're like, all right, I'm going to get it. It feels like there's nothing you can do. It's true. There's no question about it. So, I, I don't know. We'll just, uh, hey, look, it's been a pretty darn good winter, unless, of course, you are a skier or a skater or that kind of thing. That's not too great, but. As far as the skating is concerned, there are some indoor rinks, so that does help, doesn't it? Yeah, there's lots of there's lots of ice around. I guess the issue yep. of that is getting time on it because I don't think hockey season ever really ends around here. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's true. Yes, absolutely. Any other good news? I only know you got about uh, one more minute left. Any any good news we should know about? Oh, I would just say to keep an eye on what's going on at the state capitol because 
there's this whole controversy over Uber and Lyft leaving Minneapolis yeah. yep. and kind of threatening to pull out of the whole region. But the at the state legislature is trying to come up with something that's going to, you know, appease all parties. So we'll see how that all plays out. You know, what's interesting about that is every time I look at something now, and it's, I have to ignore a lot of things because every time something happens, it's always about votes or money. And the vote thing is all about money. Well, and you're right whole, about that. It's, it's always about money. They, no, we want this group to make the money, not this group. Well, it's none of your business who makes the money. How about that action? Well, this is such a, it's a really touchy topic too, because yeah. there's, as, as many people will say that they should be paying them more, other people will go, listen, when you add it up, they will actually make less through this right. Minneapolis ordinance. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of conflicting, you know, viewpoints on this one. So it's about either money or votes. And in this case, it's both. So, but I would yeah. just, I would like to think that they get, somebody will get it figured out because that would leave yeah. a pretty big deficit, you know, for rideshare companies to not have Uber and Lyft. I mean, that's, yeah. yep. and just from a like practicality standpoint of people who are now being smart and not drinking and driving and they're, they're taking Ubers and they're being safe. Like, you know, I hate to see those people then making the decision to hop in a car and, and, you know, drive that night just because yeah, the yep. and i know there's lots of other applications too to the ride share but no question about it but we'll all figure it out because this is minnesota tough yeah you know what i'm uh, sure they will all right pally we'll talk to you tomorrow okay you guys have a good rest of your day you too sir thank you very much ladies and gentlemen channel five's chris egger brought to you by mr money talk josh arnold call josh today for your free 48 minute evaluation 952-925-5608 Matter of fact, we'll take a break. Be right back with Josh Arnold right after this. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel 5 Morning News along with my friends, Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this Five Eyewitness News morning team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris. Working with you and Ken and Hannah, it is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. 
Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Josh, ready to go? Oh, you know it. Tom, just for you, I am ready to go you're all fired up you're not on some vacation in the riviera or something like that no no, no, I, no. I, don't, I don't go out to the riviera i just take these short breaks i go to to florida to see my mother to see you heck when i go down to see to florida i can see you my mother one of my sons my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, my yeah. cousin. Then I can go see on the other coast. I can see my son number one, my daughter-in-law, my granddaughters. Then I can go to New York for a weekend, see my daughter and son-in-law and new grandson. We are just in uh, L.A. to see, I'll say, my significant others uh, family for a weekend. <laughs> Gosh, it was gorgeous. Yeah, or was it the weather was great? Manhattan Beach where they where they live. I saw a collegiate uh, beach volleyball tournament. Ooh. Yeah, both the boys, well I guess I'll say the men and the women. Beach volleyball tournament right on the beach in Manhattan Beach. A lot of people watching. Not only to mention all the all the surfers out there. Surfs up. Indeed. Oh, they still love their surfing in California, don't they? Yeah. So I just go to the Riviera. Why why do I have to travel that far to see to see water. I got beautiful water right here in the United States. It's very, very you All know, over I, the United States. I don't even know where the Riviera is. Where the hell is it? I've never been there. You've never been to France? Oh, it's in France. Well, I've been I've been in Fran- France for about I was in France for like one hour once. I walked across the border from where Switzerland or something. I don't know where the hell I was. I have no idea. But I was in France for a little while. Very nice people. Except for one guy in France came over and asked if I was... What's the name of their special forces in France again? They have a name for it. They're kind of like... I don't know. It would be kind of like the Green Berets in America. They have their own force in France, but I can't remember. It's not the Foreign Legion. It used to be the Foreign Legion, I think, but it's called something else now. But in any case, let's get right down to the facts here. You're still upset that your mom likes me more than you. That's the problem. And that is true. (laughs) <laughs> I want to like you much more than me. I don't know whether you, you know, you're on her her side, or you're just such a nice guy. That must be it. There's no question about it. Hey, oh look. my goodness, she loves you. I love her, man. She's Are we going to go person. see Tom again? Are we going to go see Tom again? <laughs> yeah, we're going to see Tom and Catherine. Catherine will be oh, there. They are so nice. She's a wonderful person, no question. It reminds me of being a little kid again, being around your mother, I'll tell you that. She's got, you know, for 96, she's, she's got a lot of energy. And she told me she just got interviewed by the uh, um, Fort Lauderdale Sentinel. And I guess it must be a human interest story. Mm-hmm. On how a 96-year-old woman, you know, carries the handicap she does on the golf course. She's a good golfer. She still yep. plays. You know, she still gets out twice a week to play play uh, 18 holes each time. And we can close out this conversation by saying that both Josh and I are pissed off because his mother looks younger than both of us. <laughs> <laughs> she does. It must be the vitamin. It's the vitamin <laughs> she takes. Yep. <laughs> or uh, could be could be in the genes. Meantime, we'll yes. we'll, we'll, we'll switch gears. Uh, we can talk a little bit about ad- athletics because this this week there are two athleisure firms that do report their earnings, both Lululemon 
and Nike report earnings. Lululemon has been a long, long, long time uh, growth stock. Nike at one time was a solid growth company, but not so much anymore. Now, Nike could surprise on the upside with positive guidance and could talk positively about changes happening in China, but I'm not so sure of that. Uh, yeah. Nike's Nike shoes uh, really have not shown uh, any tremendous design leaps, and it looks like shoe collectors are not We'll say jumping up and down uh, to collect, collect to collect Nike's new shoes. Now, of course, all that could change a little bit with some change in designers. But as time has gone on, Nike has moved away from uh, design CEOs and marketing CEOs to we'll call them bean counting CEOs. And that has made all the difference, at least on a negative way. Uh, not to not to get down on on bean counters, but when you're in, we'll say, the fashion business, you need fashion-related people to lead to lead your company, and. Right now, Nike doesn't have that. Right. But we could we could see a change, you know, at, at some point in time. Uh, now, I could point out and looking at Nike, well, you've got the Olympics coming up uh, in several months, and that's usually a, a positive. You've got uh, basketball, basketball tournaments coming up. That's usually a positive to, to Nike. And you've got baseball season coming up. That's usually a positive to Nike. The negative to Nike, China. Yeah. China right. is going through a deflationary point in time. Their economy has really slowed, slowed down. And that has had an adverse effect on, on consumers. You can even see it in uh, sales coming from China from my favorite uh, company, that being Apple. Uh, sales are a little slower, but revenue for Apple is still up. And Apple still has uh, four of the top six selling uh, phones in, in China. And I am still just switching gears, very positive on Apple, and Apple did announce, uh, well, I can't say Apple announced, Bloomberg News reported that Apple and Google could get together on generative AI with Apple utilizing Google's Gemini AI product. Now, when it comes to that, uh, and I will say on the news, both Apple and Google stock went up yesterday, uh, only to retreat a little bit by the end of the day. But my sense is that this, this deal could be predicated more on Google maintaining uh, their position as Apple's default search engine and as part of the financial package that Google pays uh, Apple, Apple will be getting uh, the Gemini AI product with with that. I think Apple is also developing their own AI and has been in the midst of buying several AI startups. Uh, generative AI, or artificial intelligence, uh, is all about more productivity saving time and providing more data uh, to help, I'll say, help users of the product. Uh, 
and it's, I'll say, the next leap as part of what I will call the Internet 3.0. We have Internet 1.0, which was the early 90s, uh, developing the Internet, uh, getting that uh, built out. Internet 2.0, some of the early uses of the Internet, which include uh, uh, shop, uh, I'll say retail and shopping through companies like uh, second favorite uh, Amazon and uh, and data data retrieval, which would include companies like Google uh, that that really benefit off a data retrieval, which would include Meta, now Facebook and Instagram, as well as Google, and now generative AI Internet 3.0 which now has, uh, we'll call it uh, additional thinking, but again, that's all from the data that's been, been stored up. Uh, so companies that will be able to process the data, store the data will still be, be big, and the uses for, for this are enormous. Now, the thought is going to be not so much on who's developing it, but who's going to be able to utilize uh, generative AI. Uh, one analyst with this said, uh, when you think of generative AI, think about who's going to benefit from, from the development. Just think of the early years of refrigeration and ice making it. One of the big beneficiaries of that, Coca-Cola. Oh, yeah. So who in, in generative AI is going to be the next Coca-Cola? Who's going to utilize this the, the most? Right now, uh, it's up in the air. But the biggest company behind this at this point and the company or companies that have gotten the most uh, press is NVIDIA, which is a chip maker. They had a recent conference. Uh, the stock ran up into the conference and it became a sell the news event, uh, dropping the stock from a high of 925 down to 860 uh, after, after the news. I think there are numerous companies that are going to be utilizing AI as time goes on, and I've always teased out right now, if you have AI in your name and TS, as in Taylor Swift, you can make a lot of money with that. Isn't that amazing? Uh, and I kind of tease out there's Live Nation, which combines both. There you have it. Another brilliant report, Josh. I have one question on your way out, and I have it for all three of you, uh, going back to the Nike deal. Devin, uh, tie mm -hmm. shoes or slip-ins? Tennis shoes. Um, I will – I just don't tie my – I always slip in, but they have laces. I just don't tie them. You just don't tie them? Yeah. Okay, because I – Catherine just bought me three pairs of slip-in tennis shoes. My God, I love them. They're phenomenal. You just slip them on. They fit perfectly. Josh, you got any slip-ons? No, I did. I do not have slip ones. I bend down, tie my tie my uh, running shoes. I've always bent down and tied my running shoes. Uh, I've got no problem with the with the laces. I bend down, tie my running shoes. To me, they fit much better. The slip in stuff. Now you're you're a big guy. Kevin's a big guy, so maybe it's a little harder harder for you to bend it. Oh, down here we go. Here we go. Oh, come on. I'm around I'm around around <laughs> you guys. I feel like a shrimp. <laughs> you know, I'm five foot ten and I feel like a shrimp around you. You giant. All you know, right. You're all well over six feet tall. Um you're you're over six feet tall. You're massive guys massive 
shrimp. I'm just a skinny, five foot ten, 150 pound, broken down runner. All right, Pally, we will talk to you. If you really want to ask me something at some point in time, maybe we can talk about this on Friday, is uh, one of the biggest mistakes I made in investing uh, by not buying Nike on the IPO, particularly uh, given my uh, background in selling running shoes out of the trunk of my car uh, decades ago uh, with the predecessor company to Nike. All right, Pally, we'll talk to you on Friday on the family show. Look forward to it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Arnold, take a break. Be uh, right back. Brett Gelman promoting his uh, book, the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories. Brett Gelman right after this. Arts means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning, and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average four point nine star rating so their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and spelling how it should call 952 z-e-r-o-r-e-z or visit zeroresminnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the tom bernard special zero res spell it forward or backward it spells the same schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Brett, ready to go? Sure is. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know what I just did, Brett. I just I must have hit something with my. Oh, there we go. I couldn't see anybody for a minute there. Brett, I have to ask you one question because oh. it just came up. Brett Gelman, our special guest, promoting his book, The Terrifying Realm of the Possible Nearly True Stories. I want to talk all about that. But, Brett, let me ask you a question. How, why is it that you can't yeah. get a job? I mean, you know, Brett's work can be seen on television, Stranger Things, Fleabag, Love, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Twin Peaks, The Return, Adult Swim Special Trilogy, Dinner with Friends with Brett Gelman, and in films including The Other Guys, Lemon, Without Remorse, and Lyle Lyle Crocodile, Terrifying Realm of the Possible is his first book. Why don't you get a job, Brett? Let's go. <laughs> I know you're right. I mean, I've been uh, I've been lazy. I, I I've been uh, I, I've just been uh, you know just jerking around. And I, I you're, you're absolutely right. And this is why I came on the show today to really 
get some clarity, get off of my keister and get yep. to work. Okay. I'm, I'm going out. I'm, I'm reading the, I'm reading the, uh, what is this? Uh, what are the, the job pages again? <laughs> what are those? Oh yeah. Uh, I forgot. Uh, what ads? The, the classified. Yeah. The one. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Going to check those out and, you know, really, you know, put it in on a work finally at once in my life. Now, I have to ask you a question. You have to understand something. I'm very centrist in my politics. So I look at the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories. Is this about CNN and, and Fox News, nearly true stories? Is that what it's about? <laughs> yeah, no, it's about them duking it out. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, Sean Hannity and Anderson Cooper basically yes. uh, having dinner together and talking about what, you know, where they think they've contributed to the media landscape and its downfall. You know what I mean? Uh, no, oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, that should be my next book, actually. That would be good. I want to hear all about the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories. What's it all about? It's around five characters, a child, a, a teenager, a, an adult, an older woman, and a person in the afterlife. And it basically, it's all, you know, they each have like five stories of a piece and it's them grappling with the big thing, uh, themes of life, the big questions, but uh, not uh, being very good at the grappling at all, uh, actually very badly. So, you know, it's sort of a, a purge of how bad I am at, at grappling with those questions. Eh, we all we all have the problem, don't we? Yeah, oh, totally. Kind of seems like it. That's I not, love that. Being alive, right? Yeah, exactly. I love the title, The Terrifying Realm of the Possible. Because terrifying and the possible put together, it, it, it's, it's a little scary. No question about it. Yeah. No, well, it's definitely like, you know, I'm very scared that these characters, uh, you know, who they are and how their brains work are, you know, definitely a reflection of me, of who I was, who I am, or who I might become. So, you know, it's uh, it's all somewhat of a, you know, a selection of nightmares, <laughs> Well, you know, we've all had those. There's no question about it. Why is it? It's interesting because this always pops into my head whenever I talk to, you know, actors that are in horror films or whatever. Talk Just the, the title, The Terrifying Realm of the Possible. Um, why is it that we, because I'm right in there with everybody else, Brett Gelman, why is it we like to be put on the edge of our seats? We like to be scared. What, what is that all about? I think, well, I think that, uh, you know, life can get pretty boring, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> true. Uh, you know, for everybody, no matter how exciting your life is. I think that, yeah, that we like to, we, we're a little, uh, we're a little masochistic in that way. We like to, you know, be, make ourselves uncomfortable and then like sort of the, it's the lead up, right? It's experiencing that lead up to being scared and then it coming through, you know, it's, uh, it's something that you can count on, uh, in a lot of ways. Too. Right. And that's a very good point. See, and I, I'm really glad I asked you that because you're right. It's something you can count on in a lot of cases, especially these days. That's not true. That's, that's a very good point, Brett. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. You know, I, uh, it, it, absolutely. You know, you're going to get that, like that build up and then that jump scare in yep. the same way that, you know, that's why people like humor because it's the same process. You get that build up and then that laugh. Yeah, absolutely. Right. There's no question about it. How does it all start, Brett? I mean, how long ago, what was the first thought that popped in your head about the terrifying realm of the possible? How did it all start in your head? I think that, you know, I just, there was a, there's a story in there about a kid who, you know, uh, thinks that he's got, well, he doesn't think he has demons in his head, uh, absolutely, but he imagines that there are demons in his head telling him, uh, you know, making him have OCD. I mean, and so that was pretty much a thing I struggled with as a kid, and I sort of had, that was the seed to that story and who that kid is, and there's like autobiographical elements about wanting to be accepted and what you do to do that, and there's just, you know, a lot of my fears and anxieties put into this book that would, you know, sort of uh, jump off of and, and, and create the story from. You know, it's really great about it, too. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in case uh, you've never met Brett Gelman, he, he cuts a fine figure. He's a handsome young man. But that picture they put uh, on, on the descriptor, you're staring at me right now like you want to kill me. 
across the car. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa. Oh, no. Oh, no. I was, you know, hey, it's, it's a very serious picture. Yes, but, it is. Uh, it's kind of funny. You know, I'm sitting there cross-legged <laughs> with the book open. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's your quintessential, very ultra-dramatic uh, author photo. It is a great photo. There's no question about it. It yeah. will sell a lot of books. Thank I, I'm you. Absolutely, yeah. We're talking to Brett Gelman about well, his book. My, my future brother-in-law, David Simon Dion, who's a brilliant photographer, took that photo. Well, there you go. It, it did work out beautifully yeah. in the end. There's no question about it. I, I think it's really important right now, Brett, because if you watch the news, everybody hates everybody else. And and where, whether you have to start with a I love everybody or I'm scared of everybody, the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories, we need to start feeling things other than a hatred for the opposite. And I've never understood that, by the way, Brett, at all. I don't agree with you, therefore you hate me. It's like, what? How did we ever get there? It's really crazy. It uh, is. You know, I think it's, uh, hey, I think, I, I think I, this might be a cliche thing to say, but I think social media is very much to blame and, yep. uh, and the extremism on both sides of the news uh, of mainstream media is very much to blame. I think that we sort of existed out of this place of being able to develop uh, actual opinions. We don't develop opinions these days. We develop reactions. Yeah, and, yep. you know, because opinions take analytical thought and everybody has their own, you know, my, if you really develop an opinion, mine is going to be somewhat different from yours. Even if we agree on most things, yeah. you and I are going to find something that we disagree on. And then we have a conversation, but social media and, and the way things are posed to us in these, in this country these days. It makes it so that we're we're not having a conversation. Everybody's monologuing and not listening to anybody else. Mm-hmm. That's a very good way to put it, uh, Brett. Seriously, nobody's listening to anybody. Everybody hates everybody, and everybody's uncomfortable. That's why things like the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories, I think, will be good for people's mental health to sit down and let it go. I, I hope you are terrified by the book, so you don't have to be terrified by looking at the politics of the United States. You know, it's a it's a better way to yeah, be scared yeah. reading your book. Well, I think that, you know, people put a lot of their own personal fears into things like politics, you yep, know, and there's a lot of people not facing their own personal uh, anxieties. And so, you know, that's in a way a lot scarier than putting that outside of you. And so you project that onto things like uh, political issues like that. And uh, and you're so, you're so driven to not deal with the stuff inside of yourself uh, the, you know, the more you, yep. you evade that, the more you're going to go extreme. That's interesting you bring it up that way, Brett, because I, I have uh, four brothers and two sisters. Uh, there are a couple of us that like, you know, the scary movies, the scary books or whatever. But some of some of my brothers and sisters do not like it at all. I, 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 how does that develop? Do you have any idea how uh, maybe uh, half of a family... Uh, can grow up loving things like terrifying realm of the possible while others just avoid it. Uh, how does that happen? I, you know, I think it's just, uh, I think some people get, look, you seem like a, a, a person who likes to face things. I think being yep. able to watch scary things uh, is a way, uh, an ability to <laughs> face, uh, face our nightmares. And so, I uh, I think that you know people who don't it doesn't mean they're you know lesser people or or weaker people but they just uh, that's just not their bag they right. want uh, they want something a lot smoother whereas so, I don't seek that out you know I don't think right. life is smooth I don't see it that way so there's a lot of terrifying aspects possibly to life and I you know I get some sort of therapy of facing that you know rather yep. than avoiding that but if you want to avoid that I'm not going to judge you you know that's your thing you know uh, that uh, it might work for you I'm judging them for you Brett that's what I want you to know that I'll judge you <laughs> you got to come to town yeah, come in studio pal cool. are you going to go are you going to go on a book tour I love that yeah I'm on a, I'm, I'm on a small one uh, I'm in New York right now I'm going to be going to Atlanta and San Francisco and then uh I'm going to be uh, going to Chicago at one point, but uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty tiny right now, but 
I'd love to come into the studio sometime. You got to do it, Brett. It'd be great to have you in. The book is called The Terrifying oh, Realm so of the Possible Nearly True Stories, right in my wheelhouse, as a matter of fact. I need, I need distraction yeah. right now. And I, I really do need distraction right now. And just actually sitting and reading makes me very, very calm. I do like that. Oh yeah, well I think you know. Hey, I mean the 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 book is a is a a, a couple hundred pages of pure anxiety, but I think that <laughs> it'll help you. It'll help you. Uh, I think hopefully you'll relate to it in a certain way that you can laugh at it. I think that's exactly right. I will be reading the terrifying realm of the possible nearly true stories. Brett Gelman, G E L M A N. We'll hopefully see you in studio soon, Brett. Thank you for your time. I hope so too. Thank you so much. What a good guy. I like good guys, good authors. Don't you think it, you got, do you guys go that route? Do you like scary things once in a while? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I might have to check his book out because I loved him in Stranger Things. He was like one of the main characters in yep. the most recent season. So I'll definitely have to check his book out. Yeah. And I'll, I'll have to check that out too because I loved him in uh, The Other Guys, which, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. which is it's such a weird role because, you know, he's a very minor character, but like I kind of like seeing, Guys like that maybe like showcase what they actually have, and so this book, I mean, kind of takes a dip into his mind, maybe. So mm-hmm. it'll be fun. I bet you're absolutely right about that. There's no question. But I, that kind of thing, some people get scared. Uh, for some reason, when I read things like that or see, th- I'm not talking about slaughter and over the top kind of deal, but little jump jump scare type of deals. I love that stuff because it makes you feel human. You know? Yeah. No question about it. We'll take a break. Speaking of feeling human. Just the ability to talk to Kristen Bird about Hollywood news makes me feel like a human being right after this. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Recently, Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC was contacted by a company that does on-site sales. Jim was confused. Wait, they don't know anything about us, our staff, our reputation, most importantly, our customers. Hey, pal, no problem. We do them all over the country. You know, get the manager off the roof sale, inflatable gorilla sale, and our favorite, the 13-hour sale with a giant clock that goes to 13. Urgency, baby. We bring our crew because, well, your people are, let's just say, a little uh, laid back. And the pricing? Nothing special, sport. But Jim thought, we price competitively every day. Our prices are special. We definitely don't need these guys. But sale does convey some urgency, so he made a bold decision for his fine dealerships. Announcing the Valley Buick GMC 365 day sale. And we can even extend it a couple years or so. I got the Air Dancer guy, scratch-offs, plastic keys, bubble machine. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley or Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Hurry. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. With a smiley Kristen Burt. That's all I have to say. Good morning. Very big smile. Got the kitty on her lap. Kristen Burt Entertainment News is brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So what's the latest? What's the latest? Well, I, I have a question for you from the last segment. All right. 
When are you going to write your memoir? Never going to happen. Why not? I even have a name for it, actually. I want to call it Miasma, which means poisoned air. What do you think? Do it. Why aren't you writing your memoir? I'm serious. <sighs> who cares? I, mean, I think a lot of your it? listeners care. Really? Yeah. And, and honestly, celebrity memoirs have never been hotter. Why wouldn't you write your story? I, I just... I don't know. I can't accept in my head that anybody give a rat's ass. I'm pretty sure they do. And I feel like we should throw it out there on your Facebook mm -hmm. page and get a little like temperature read on this. But I have a feeling more people are going to agree with me than you on this. I'm going to start it off. It all started in a small town in central Minnesota called Long Prairie. Is that how I should start it? Absolutely. If that is how you want to start your story, that is authentic to you. Okay. Does it surprise any of you, the three of you and our listeners, that the one thing my mother talked about my until I was about two years old, how long do you have a baby bottle? I'll tell you what, like a, a year or something like that? Somewhere around there. It's about a year, isn't it? I mm -hmm. don't even know. I don't but know. I'm said, not a mom. I'm a cat mom. <laughs> yeah, there you go. My, my mother said I set the new world record because back then all baby bottles were glass. They were not plastic, which I still wonder, should baby bottles be plastic? Does that bleed into the milk at all for them? Well, now they do the bottles that they claim are BPA free right. and supposedly safe. But I mean, if you're looking at all the reports lately, there is plastic swimming around our bodies because right. it's seeping in from everything. And I mean, you you just think like we're constantly touching plastic. There's Tupperware. We use we use plastic for everything. We do indeed. So un with the understanding that when I was born, I was almost, well, I was about 22, 23 inches tall and I weighed 11 pounds. And then by the time I was one year old, I was about normal human size. But she, my mother said, and again, those baby bottles were all glass back then. I think they still should be because I don't like the idea of plastic seeping into baby's milk. But she said, I would finish my bottle and throw it against the wall and break it every time. <laughs> so I haven't changed at all in all those years. I'm the same you guy. Haven't. I'm the same guy I was when I was born. <laughs> I don't know why I would do that. I, I, I of course, don't remember it because I was only a year old. But for some reason, I love to break my baby bottles. I don't get it. That's okay. You're a bull in a china shop, as they say, a right? Bull in a china shop. Yeah. How I about... don't know, Tom. I think people need to hear your story. And I think especially where your era of radio was so, so successful, so yeah. profitable. And an era we won't see again when it comes to this genre. Nope. It's right. shifted completely. I really honestly think that the more stories that are told, the better. And you should do it. Write my memoir. That's all I need. I'll write your memoir with you. Oh, you're going to do I'm it with a, me? I, I'm a writer. I'll write your memoir with you. You just sit there and you tell me stories and I write. We'll okay. have to spend all day together during writing oh, sessions. <laughs> won't that be just fantastic for you? <laughs> no question about it, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I'll have to get back to it. But we have to call it Miasma. Poisoned Air is a great name for a book. Poisoned about, Air. Talking about somebody on the air. Get it? I, I honestly think you should call it poisoned air, poisoned not air miasma. Great, oh, just poisoned air. Poisoned air. I actually knows what miasma means. Right. I think you're going to be explaining to too many people, and they're going to think it's yeah. a science book. Just poisoned air, and basically it's both sides of it too. It'd be actually it'd be a good name. Just call it poisoned air because what came out of my mouth went over the air. But also the people in the front office who did nothing but badmouth people and stab them in the back. That poisoned air too. Yeah, like Poisoned Air, My Life in the Trenches. I like it. So Get good. It all right, It'll please put that on your Facebook page because I really want to hear everyone else's opinion on this. Okay, should I write a book? I'm going to put that on my Facebook page. Yes. Should, should you write your memoir? Yes. How long does it take? Um, I, you know, I think the writing process, depending on how you dedicate your sessions, I mean, I think it would be about a year with edits and things like that. i got to put it on for a year. I know. <laughs> Catherine, I got to talk to Kristen again, for Christ's sake. KB1, KB2. What am I you know, do? and then obviously an editor would, would work on edits and say, we need to flesh out this story more. This one mm -hmm. is not going to work. We're going to rearrange this order. You know, they, they make all of the sort of the judgment calls on it. And then you put it together and you do a book tour. Now, how deep should I go into my family history? I think as much as... 
A, you feel comfortable with, that's super important, but B, how much of your childhood and upbringing um, really reflects who you are today. Oh, all of it. There's no question. Yeah. Well, like I said, when you find out your little boy, that two of your great uncles and one of your uncles was murdered, that's a nice place to start. Not a lot of people find out that one of their relatives has been murdered. We had three of them that got murdered. Whoa. Isn't that amazing? Well, the first one, I wasn't even born yet. August the 1st was uh, both arms, both legs broken, shoved head first into a snowbank and froze to death. That's a mob story. That would be a mob story. Hey, how did you know that, by the way? <laughs> we, by we... the manner of death, unfortunately. <laughs> and I think maybe all three of them might have been involved in that kind of thing. But, you know, well, yeah, one was beaten to death, both arms, both legs broken and froze to death. And then the second one was beaten to death with a pipe. And the third one was thrown off a, uh, like a 28-story building. So that that also pretty... sounds like a mob hit. It does sound like a mob. Maybe I should be in the mafia. I'd probably fit in better. You could be the godfather. Let me just tell you something. I could start talking like this. It would be unbelievable. I still think The Godfather is one of the greatest movies ever made. Maybe I kind of makes me feel comfortable. Does that sound stupid? <laughs> that the godfather You're like, I feel was... at home with this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel at home with the movie The Godfather. All right, so what's happening in the real world? The movies, television, any great things coming out? Yeah, I, well, I think um, one thing, and this sort of reflects on what we talked about last week, we were talking about TikTok and, and whether it's going to get banned or not. I know the Senate's getting a little sweaty about the issue because mm -hmm. people have been calling. Um, but Hollywood is starting to weigh in on the issue. And there's kind of two sides to this. And I think it's kind of interesting. You have 170 million people in the U.S. currently on TikTok. Ooh. And it has become one of the most influential marketing tools for Hollywood in terms of TV and film. Mm -hmm. And to take that away really changes the game for them because it basically takes away particularly your alpha gen and Gen Z from the equation. Right. And these are the people they're trying to lure to the table. And they're the people who are coming to Hollywood the least in terms of watching TV and film. Um, so and other on the flip side of this, Hollywood is also like, well, if we get rid of TikTok, that will bring more people back to TV and film because we're not capturing mm -hmm. the Gen Z and Alpha Gen audience the way we have with millennials, Gen X and boomers. Um, but overall, if you take a look at this, there are many people, many Americans making a very substantial income off of TikTok, whether it's through the creator fund, whether it's right. through brand deals, and you will take away a lot of people's income, which is why I think, uh, politicians are seeing such a backlash to right. the ban of TikTok. And is anybody's brain, I've never been on TikTok, so I don't know, but is anybody's brain being poisoned by TikTok? My, okay, I'll, I'll talk about my personal algorithm just because uh, it, what TikTok does very well is it tailors it to your taste and what you're yeah. viewing and what you're yep. enjoying, what you're liking, commenting on, et cetera. So mine is, is Hollywood. So I get a lot of stream of like Hollywood, Hollywood gossip, all of that. Oh, okay. I get a lot of cat videos um, a lot of oh, like, I found a kitten on the road and I took it home and I keep on telling Bill, I'm like, I just want to go on a hot girl walk and find a kitten and rescue it because <laughs> this is my TikTok <laughs> fantasy, <laughs> like yep. rescuing a kitten. I um, so it's a lot of that, a little bit of po politics, but if I feel like I start, it starts diving too heavy into something, I will just say not interested and it, it'll it change my algorithm. So, and and the other thing that's in my, is, is Olympic sports. I love Olympic sports, figure skating, gymnastics. So I see a ton of that cheerleading, you name it, it is all in my algorithm. So my feed in general is pretty happy. Oh, so that's good. See, that works out beautifully. I was just reminded by a relative that, Tom, you always talk about the three guys who were murdered in the family. Why don't you ever talk about the fact that the other half of the guys were in the pol on the police force? That's always the case, by the way, in my neighborhood. If there were thugs in your family, you also had cops in your family. <laughs> it was, it's, I don't know how that works out, but it does. My, uh, my cousin Lamont Dean was a, a detective with the Minneapolis Police Department, one of the most lovely, wonderful men you'd ever want to meet. Just a great guy. So now I'm already th thinking about stuff to talk about in a book. Way to go, Kristen. See, we can start out with an outline of what you want to talk about. I'm telling you. Right now what I want to talk about is getting – we were just talking, you know, Rick Elman is a great guy, by the way. Just had him on. And we're just talking about the fact that people have got to calm down with their being pissed off nonstop about 
everything. Relax. Well, then you can rant in your book. Wait, I, I have this whole plan. And then you option it to Hollywood. And then they make either a docu-series about it or they do a scripted show or a movie. A movie starring Jim Neighbors as Tom Bernard. That'd be great. <laughs> hey, kids, how you doing? Yeah. But only if they make the movie like three hours long. So it's right. way too long for Tom to even watch it. Yeah, I, could, I can't go to my own movie. It's too long. <laughs> he won't. He'll be like, he'll be like, have you watched your movie? You're like, I'm sorry. It was too long. It should have been 96 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to start thinking about who's going to play me. Right. Oh, movie. that's right. Got to get somebody to play you. Who plays me? Oh, um, uh, hear me out. Amy Adams with, with a little bit of a blonder tint to her hair. Yeah, I'm I'm actually a redhead under here, oh, so yeah, it would really? actually work. <clears throat> I am. Mm -hmm. Catherine's a redhead, so that's why you two get along. You know, and KVs. KVs. Um, I could also say Julie Bowen might play me. I think that would fit Ooh, from yeah. Modern Family, the mom. Oh yeah, I could see that absolutely. I think yeah. That would work. Um, yeah. All right, I'm okay with both of those choices. Okay. I want to play me, and if you could bring up the picture, is there any way you can put a picture up with our pictures, AJ? Um, I would just need you to send it to me. I don't. Oh, I could. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't have it. I just. But uh, there's a guy I'm picturing to play me. It'd be wonderful. Rondo Hatton. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, go, oh. I, 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 I remember this conversation. I think from the past here. Uh, what? What do you mean? We've never had this conversation before. Rondo Hatton play as Tom Bernard. <laughs> the guy's like a caveman. In living form, or was he's dead now? You well, we need picture, someone Kristen? alive to play you, Tom. <laughs> well, it's going to be a problem, man. No question about it. But he he was as close to an ape as any living human. He really was. Do you know who I'm talking about? He yeah, was, we, he was like we, the guy in every scary movie ever with the big nose. And there the... he is. Yes. There's Rondo. <laughs> Has he ever been on a date? You think? Yes, because he was in Hollywood. Because <laughs> he was famous. He, was in, he could yes. get a date because he's famous. And you know what? Right now, there's a whole thing um, about Gen Z. They like quirky looking guys. You know, you look at Barry Cohen. You look at Adam yeah. Driver. They're all like the hot guys, Timothy Chalamet. They're all kind of like quirky looking. So yep. if you're a quirky looking guy, it is your era. Go for it. <laughs> no question about it. Okay, I'll tell you what. Because Marlon Brando's dead, he couldn't play me, which was very upsetting. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. I'd have to figure out who could play me. We'll have to get back to you on that one, right? We need someone with a, a really great voice, too. It just yeah. can't be like, oh, it looks like Tom. It needs someone that has that presence. Jim the Neighbors had voice. a great voice. Well, Tom, mm -hmm. who's who, who's the guy from the John Wick movies that always gets mistaken or you always get like compared to? Oh, um, God, somebody just said, because I put up a, vote, a, a video and they said, oh, my God, it's... Oh, damn it. I know who exactly who you're talking about, but I can't think Ian of McShane? Name. Ian McShane. Ian oh. McShane. That's exactly who it is, yeah. that's He should play me, apparently. That's a good one. Yeah, people think I look like Ian McShane. Well, I don't, but a lot of people do. He looks like he's crabby. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> what? De Tevin gets played by Denzel. I was just going to say, that's oh, Denzel that's Washington. <laughs> what about Denzel's son? Because he's younger. Denzel's too old to play yeah. you. Well, yeah, but or either that or like Drake. That's Michael the other B. One Jordan. I get a lot. Michael B. Drake. Jordan. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan's a good one. Or you tell I look like a Wayans brother every once in a while. Yeah, you could look you like know, Marlon, what? maybe. Marlon's my neighbor, by the way. Nope. Nope. Really? It's, yeah. It's, I got the guy, Fred Sanford. <laughs> Fred Sanford <laughs> as Kevin. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, I like it. I, I did have a quick question for Kristen because I've been seeing a lot of buzz about quiet on set, the Nickelodeon, I guess, kind of scandal with Drake Bell and a bunch of other people. Yeah. What have you been hearing about that either before this came out or now that it's released on Hulu, I believe? Okay. I, I will talk about uh, quickly before I have seen the I, first couple of episodes for quiet on set. Um, First of all, it is it really dives into what happened in the 90s and early 2000s um, in Nickelodeon. The Dan Schneider allegations in terms of inappropriate behavior, no one has really like gone as far as saying like sexual abuse with him particularly, but he was very abusive on set emotionally and mentally. Um, and those were kind of like a Harvey Weinstein. This has been known for a very long time. And I think what's most disturbing is that Nickelodeon is a kid's channel and nothing was really done about it. 
Um, I, I question a lot of this in like, where was SAG and after I know some of their shows were non-union, but the shows that were union, where again was SAG after with all of these allegations? Yeah. Um, I highly recommend people watch it and I'll, I'll tell you why it's always Hollywood that gets the eyeballs on it when it comes to grooming, sexual, child, sexual, sh sexual abuse, even emotional abuse um, on set. And it happens because parents, even though they're there, everyone gets so starry eyed and they feel like they have to go with the flow. And they're like, of course, you know, of course my kid can do this. And they let their kid go off with like the director or a writer or somebody else on set, a trusted person who has groomed you to think that they are a trusted person. Um, but I want to remind people that this happens in sport quite a bit and not yeah. just Olympic level sport. It happens on recreational level sport, um, whether your kids on the soccer field or in the dance studio really watch this because it is eye opening. And Drake Bell's father talks about how he was isolated from his son. And I remind you, not only was he Drake Bell's parent, but he was also his manager. So he was very involved in his son's career. And he was isolated from him. Um, and this this guy, Brian Peck, who is now a convicted sex offender, ha inserted himself into the entire family's life. And Drake Bell has talked about how excruciating that time period was in his life. And this is the first time he's come forward with it. And if you see the traje trajectory of his life and what has happened to him since, it explains a lot of things. So I highly recommend anyone who's a parent who has kids in, in sports or theater, dance, any of those things, cheerleading, that you do watch this because it can happen to anyone. It is true. Another brilliant report, sister, except for the miasma part. It's going to be what, poisoned air, poisoned yeah, air, po poisoned air. Yeah, there you go. Poisoned air. Uh, yeah, I think that's the so, better. Okay. Yeah. All right, and Works. throw that on your Insta on your Facebook account because I think people are going to respond really well. Miasma or poisoned air. Uh, I just think say, should I do a memoir? Should I call it poisoned air? <laughs> just throw out those questions. Great idea. All right, we'll talk to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Bird Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Okay, so we got Red Fox playing uh, Tevin. Who's playing AJ? Can Jack Black turn back the clock quite a bit? Or yeah. Jack yeah. Black, yeah. He's probably a little too old to play him. Yeah. Although Red Fox is a couple years older than Tevin, too. But, you know. Just a little bit. And we're also super old. He can play like on my deathbed. Yeah. Me. This they'll play the characters like looking back at Tom's career as we yes. talk about what it was like to work with him. Yes. Oh my god, it was a personal hell. I can hear it now. <laughs> All right, fellas. We will talk to you tomorrow. I'll be back in about 10, 12 minutes, something like that, with the family show. Diana Pierce, our very special guest on that show. A couple other people are gonna be on too. So we'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Yep, talk to you then.